Okay, so we're now ready to thread our loom. My video got cut off, so I'm gonna see if I can splice it together. If I can't, you guys just know this is video two. Um, all right, so this is considered the back side of my loom. This is the front. I put a piece of tape here because there was a cut in it, and you can see it's kind of getting like wobbly. You're gonna take and you're gonna you're gonna tape in about in the middle of your board your string right here on the edge and you're gonna start on the very edge of your loom the very first notch as you can see and you're gonna pull that through um, as an update I'm only doing 16 because I I already know I don't have enough string because I strung the whole thing before I realized the video wasn't recording so you probably will only have enough string to do 16 is my guess but it depends on, again, your board. If it's longer, you probably only get 12 or 14. All right, then I'm gonna pull it straight down and I'm gonna pull it through this very first one. Okay, then I'm gonna flip it and I'm gonna go to the second one and I'm gonna pull it through. So you can see I've got string on the front and string on the back. Now I'm pulling it through the second one. Just like dental floss, you're pulling, this is like teeth and you're just pulling it through the teeth. Make sure you don't skip one. Make sure you don't double up. So you're finding the very next one, you're pulling it taut. So you can see it's almost like little, you know, guitar strings, okay? And we're just back and forth to each of the next things. Okay. And obviously I found tape. So that's the part of the video that you missed. It was so exciting. Um, and I'm kind of just going fast here, but you can see that I'm just flipping it and going through, getting them all the same tightness. You don't want a really loosey goose string. Like if you're doing your strings and they look like this, that's incorrect. Just pull it all the way. And if you yank it down, then you're getting the right um, tautness. Your, your ball of yarn can fall on the floor. That's completely fine. That's what mine did. And as it unravels, it might knot up a little bit. You want to get those knots out. So just try to keep, try to keep it untangled if you can. Mine keeps, I actually am working on an old stove. And so mine keeps tangling up around the knobs, which is really funny. Um, just keep going to the next one all right so now that's my last one because here is number 15 and 16 and I don't I don't need those because remember I want an even number and you want an even number because you're gonna tie them off at the end when, when we're done not not today um, okay, so now I've got this long tail. I don't need that much of a tail. I'm just gonna cut it off about the middle of my board, kind of even with the other one. It doesn't have to be exact, but I am gonna get a piece of tape and um, tape that to the board. So again, it can be washi tape, it can be masking tape is probably the easiest thing that everybody has, okay? So this is the back because this is where my my strings are taped. Okay, so I want that to be my back. This is my front. The tape here is only, it's underneath my strings. It's only on my board to make my board sturdier. Um, and I did 16 cuts, okay? And it doesn't matter that it shifted over because eventually we're gonna cut the weaving off and it won't even be on the board anymore. All right, to show you guys again, I, I did this one just as a sample. I just wanted to see like, if it worked and what it was like and all that. I'm probably gonna redo this, but I, I lost my yarn. Um, we changed some furniture around and somebody probably put it somewhere. So you should have a bag of yarn so you can pull out your yarn um, after you get this done, if you have time. Um, I think you probably should have time in class to do this, but I don't know, but even if you only get the this strung in class on Friday, that's a good start. And then you can start weaving over the weekend or even next week. Um, this one is probably harder for y'all to see the whole thing of it. I showed y'all in class. 
I did this one when I was your age. I was, I think it was probably in seventh, but I might have been in sixth grade. I'm not sure. Um, but you can see how it has a, a pattern to it that repeats. And so you kind of want to think of that as you're doing your weaving. And I did the same thing on this one, right? I started with the dark orange and then I went to the white. Then I did this multicolored one. And so you can see how I matched it each time. And my very center is this blue. Whereas on this one, this is my center, okay? I did something really neat. The teacher had us use fabric scraps. If you have some that match the colors of your bag, you're more than welcome to cut little strips. You can see they're just little thin strips of fabric or ribbon would work. Here's some just plain white. Um, so that's fine. I'll show you how to do the ends another time. Today, I just wanna show you how to get started with the weaving and you can see the back looks very similar to the front. It's just, you can see more of the, the warp threads. These threads coming down are called your warp threads. I know with our studies, you guys learned about the industrial revolution and how that was a big deal because people were having to make all their clothes before that and they were big weavers. So you'll kind of learn to appreciate some of that. Okay, so these, Yarn things that you guys got, these crazy yarn things, are called yarn monsters. Um, so you pull your yarn monster out and you can see that it's pretty long and they're tied in the middle with another short piece of yarn that you can use or not. Um, some of you received extra yarn on the side in your bag because I felt like you might need more. So some of you may have that and y'all are welcome to use that yarn. You don't have to use every piece of yarn in your kit. Um, for instance, if I'm doing this and I'm like, you know, I really don't care for this one, then you don't have to use it. This is your weaving and you can do with it as you wish. But the point of this is that you don't wanna untie this. You wanna just pull out the pieces that you wanna use. So you see how I just pulled it out and it keeps it from getting tangled. Um, as you're weaving, you can just use your fingers and I just start in the middle and then push it up. But you can use a pencil and you can tape your yarn to it. Now the only thing to doing that, if you, if you do that, is you're going to have to cut off a piece of your yarn if you do that because the tape is going to stick to your yarn. So I personally just like to use my fingers. And when you're weaving, you're going to go over, under, over, under, over, under, all the way across. So I'm going to just start by picking up a thread. So I'm going under the second one. I went over the first one, going over the third one and under the fourth one. Over, under, over, under. Okay. This white stuff that you, or cream colored stuff, you'll see it just kind of starts coming in twisted and you just have to twist it back. It's not a big deal. Over, under, over, under, over, under over under and when you're done you're going to push it up to the very top with your fingers um, and you kind of want to straighten it out okay and you're gonna push it to the very top okay whatever color you want doesn't matter what you start with you want to have some hanging off the end because my goal is that we're gonna have um, like on this weaving, you see how these, all these fringes of the different colors are hanging off the end. That's our goal. So you're going to have a piece here hanging off the end. Then you're going to take your scissors and on the other side, you're going to cut it right here. Okay. Now these scissors are not very good, so they don't want to cut. Oh, I see another pair right here. That works much better, yay. Okay, so now I have another extra piece that I can just weave back through there if I want to, okay? Or I can move on to another color. But you are thinking about, okay, what pattern do I wanna use? You know, um, it would be nice if you have a repetitive pattern where, like I showed you in this other example, you know, we've got orange, orange, white, white, multicolored, turquoise, orange, 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 orange again, and then the blue. 
okay that's kind of like the traditional weaving however this is your weaving and you may do as you please now when you do the second one do you see how my yarn start the very last here it's over this warp thread okay this is called your weft this is your warp so i'm now going to go under it first if you go over it you can see what would happen is they're gonna be exactly the same and you don't want that, you want the opposite. So we're gonna do the opposite. This one's over. So I'm gonna go under, over, under, over, under. And I'm gonna keep doing that all the way until I get to the end. And you can see mine's coming apart and that's okay. It's just some really thick yarn that I bought that I thought was really cool and God gave it to us for 75% off. It was normally $20 yarn and I got it for $5. So who can say no to that? And um, so we're just thanking God for some beautiful yarn. And so you can see where I just kind of left that hanging off the end, okay? And looks really pretty. However long you want it, is up to you. You probably don't want them super short because they're gonna come unwoven. So I would say, let's say you wanna make them at least two inches long. Okay, something like that. So then I'm gonna come over here on this side and I'm gonna cut it somewhat even with that other piece. And I have a little bitty piece now left over that I could weave through. I just won't have any hanging off if I do that. And you can do that every once in a while. That won't hurt, I don't think. We'll find out if it does. Okay, now I'm gonna switch colors. You guys do this however you want, however many colors you want. This yarn, in order to keep it from unweaving, uh, unraveling, I mean, I'm gonna fold it over just like this so it looks like a little loop on the end. Now, I went under that warp thread last, so now I'm gonna go over it. Now under it, over it, and under it. Okay, and I keep doing that all the way across. I'm just kind of picking them up like guitar threads, every other one, and I'm weaving them through. Again, if you wanna tape yours to a pencil, you can do that. You guys also were given needles in your kits. You are welcome to tape it to that needle if you want, but it is not necessary. I feel like that's just kind of cumbersome, so I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna push mine up pretty tight so that they look, um, you know, just kind of good and tight in there. There's no spaces. I don't want all of my ends to be exactly the same. I kind of like this look where they're kind of all a little bit different. And as I weave, these are gonna start coming unraveled and look a little bit more, um, have a little bit more of the look I want. Since I only have, I think I only have one of these, so I'm gonna save my other piece for down at the bottom so I can repeat that. Um, if you're worried about forgetting what you did up here, you could go ahead and work on the bottom, weave down here, do you see that? And then you could do that again. And that might be the best recommended way to do that. You'll also notice with these um, twisted yarns that there's a variation in color. So look here, this is the same piece of yarn, but this one has brown and pink, and this one is more of a orange and pink, and that's okay, okay? It doesn't, it doesn't have to be that exact that's not what i'm talking about so you would probably want to go ahead and do your two here like i just did at the top and then do the third one here and then you would just push them down okay and that would keep you going with your pattern okay so i'm going to go ahead and do that actually you know what you really i don't know maybe you can do that you just have to make sure when you get to the middle that you have a piece that is over, under, over, under, and the opposite. Because you can see how this is over, under, over. So I'm gonna leave that up to y'all. I know that's kind of confusing probably the way I just said that. Um, but you'll see what I mean when you get to the end. So like say you do start working up this way. I think it'll work out. I think it'll be fine. And then you'll just make sure you may have to put an extra piece in the middle that makes it the opposite, okay? So that you don't end up with two pieces right next to each other that are over under, okay? So I might switch to this color now. And again, I'm gonna go the opposite that I just did. So you can see there, okay? And the great thing about these 
beautiful. I just did the, I did the wrong thing. Okay, so if you do the wrong thing, just pull it out, no big deal. I'm gonna go over, under, over, under. Um, if you accidentally do it wrong, just pull it out, not a big deal. Make sure you try to leave that two inches off on the side because we're probably gonna have to tie these in order to make it work and not completely come unraveled. That's the part of this project I haven't actually experimented with. And considering I haven't done this since um, seventh grade or sixth grade, I might wanna, I might wanna do that. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing where I fold that over so it won't come unraveled. And I'm just gonna copy what I did here. I started over, under, over, under. And I'm gonna push it down towards the bottom so that I get that even design that I'm looking for. Because otherwise you might run out of yarn. And, um, and you may run out of yarn. You may not be able to fill up your entire loom if that happens. So I'm gonna push this down for right now, but if that were to happen where I were to, you know, keep going, keep going, and I realize, oh, I'm running out of yarn, that's not a big deal. You would just push all of this up to meet this part, okay? So you can see where I did that, and now I'm gonna cut this off, and I'm gonna do an extra one here at the bottom, because I'm just copying what I did on the front, I mean, on the top, okay? I'm not ever weaving on the back, that part is just gonna stay like guitar strings, okay? And you'll see, um, next week I'll teach you guys how to take it off the loom. So your job this week is just to make the loom and to make the threads and to start weaving. I want you to work on these um, next week for homework for about an hour. Oh look, see I wasn't even noticing, like I don't need to cut it off the side of the board because I've got this big old chunk right here so I can make it a little shorter. Um, okay, here's my, is this the one? Nope, this is the one that matches. Um, so in Friday in class, you're just making your loom and then next week you can start weaving. You can start weaving Friday if you want to, if you have time. But, um, or this weekend, but you're definitely gonna weave next week for your homework. And this is fun. It's very, you'll see, it's very therapeutic. Wait, okay. You, got, you do have to stop and think, okay, about what you're doing. <laughs> and um, it is very therapeutic, it's really fun. And as you get started on it, I think you're gonna have a really good time and you're gonna enjoy it. And you're gonna be surprised at how much fun it is. Okay, so I'm leaving my little tail over here and I'm gonna push that down. Okay, and I'm gonna figure out what we're gonna do with the ends. Normally, I'm just gonna tell you normally when people weave, what they do is they weave and they wrap it around, okay? And then you figure out a way to tuck your tails in. But I'm, I'm leading us to do something different um, and I'm hoping that it's gonna work out. So I'm just gonna continue to fill up my loom um, until it's full all the way, okay? These little, these little thin strings, if you have these, are really fun. These you might be able to thread through your um, needles that I gave you in your kit. Look in your regular um, art supplies for the needle if you're interested in that. Um, but they're just really thin. So you're, again, you're gonna leave your tail and you're gonna squish it down, but it does give you a nice little pop of color. And that was sort of the reason that I wanted to, you know, give everybody some of those. Okay, if you wanna watch this in piece, you wanna make, I probably should have cut that just a tad bit longer because otherwise it could pop off from underneath, you know, the side of this loom thing here. And so you wanna make sure that you're you're keeping those tucked and ready to go the way they should. So I'm, leave, I'm gonna leave those just a little bit smidge longer. 
I would rather them be, I think, a little bit longer than too short. But you could see I could pull this side to side if I need to. But again, squish it down. You don't want to have any space in between these yarn pieces. So this one's probably too short to use, but I'm gonna I'm gonna hang on to it. You never know, right? You might use it for something later. So same thing where I'm gonna do two here because I just did that. So these really thin ones don't take up as much space, but they're gonna add some pops of color and different texture, okay? So that's part of our elements of design, right? Is texture. And that's why I gave you guys so many different kinds of yarns. If you have any yarn that you find at home or you're just not happy with what you got in your kit, you are more than welcome to go to Walmart or Hobby Lobby. All Walmart has yarn. I don't know if yours does. I always have to stop and think about what I'm doing here to make sure I didn't mess it up. So don't be afraid to just stop and look. Am I going over under? Am I, go, am I doing that right? I'm gonna show you really quick, if you were to tape it to a pencil, what that would look like. Okay, so I did that. I'm gonna hang on to all of these because I might tie them to my edges at the end. That's probably what I'm gonna do. So if you used a pencil and say you taped your yarn to the end of the pencil like this, or maybe with this thinner yarn, that would definitely work. You would take your pencil and I'm gonna start over because this one is under. So I'm gonna go over, under, and so see you could do this all the way through and you just keep going. And then the thread is attached. And so as you're pulling it through, you're pulling it through your loom. Let me just do that real quick so you can see. Just pretend I have it taped. Okay, and you can see how it just pulled it right through. Okay, and then you would just pick it up where you left off. Okay, so that one's over. So I'm gonna go under, over, under, over. And so that might be something that would be a time saver for some of you guys. If you would prefer to do that, that is absolutely fine, no big deal. Look how nice that looks when you get several of those thin strings together. It looks really nice. So I'm gonna go back and do that on the bottom. So it's coming along great. Um, work on it for about an hour for homework next week on the weaving part of it. And then um, we'll see how long that takes everybody. And I will give you directions a week from now on how to take these, uh, you know, how to finish them off and how to take them off the loom. All right, happy weaving.